Hello, I'm Rob Witcher, and today we're going to talk about reflected cross-site scripting. There are actually three major types of cross-site scripting. There's stored or persistent, reflected, which is what we're going to talk about today, and DOM, document object model. I've already created a video on stored or persistent cross-site scripting, and I'll link to that down in the description of this video. So let's talk about reflected cross-site scripting. In order to explain cross-site scripting, let's first start with a simple example of a website that we're all familiar with. Let's think about google.com. So how does Google work? Well, when you go to their website, there's a big search bar there, and you can type in some arbitrary search into the search field, and when you hit submit, what happens? Well, your query is sent, your, the, the information that you've typed in that search bar is sent to google.com, and then google.com shows you a results page. And the top of that results page, results page says, here are your search results for whatever you searched for. So let's say it's cat. It'll say, here are your search results for cat. So that's how the website works. Keep that in mind as we start to talk about reflected cross-site scripting here. First, have to start with our baddie here. Now, step one, our baddie is going to send a URL containing code to the user. So what's a URL? A URL is a uniform resource locator. It's simply that address in the address bar of your browser. So it would be something like HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash google.com. And then if you look really carefully in the search results page, it'll show a question mark and say, search equals whatever you're searching for. So that's exactly what our baddie is gonna do here. Our baddie is gonna pick some website, is gonna put the website URL in there, and then in the variables part of the URL, they're gonna say, you know, question mark something. They're gonna put their code, their JavaScript code into the URL. And they're gonna send this to the user. So how could our baddie send this code to our user, send this URL to our user? Well, they could use some simple form of social engineering like say a phishing attack. So our baddie here sends an email to our user and contained within that email is a link that our user is gonna click on. So it might be uh, a faked page for your UPS tracking results, your package has been delayed, Click here for details. So what is our user gonna do? Well, step two, our user is going to click on that URL. And that URL is gonna send a request to our web server here. And what's our web server gonna do? Well, if it's a vulnerable website, it's going to reflect that code back to the user. Now it has to be a vulnerable website here, and Google is not vulnerable to this, I was just using that website as an example. But our website here has to reflect this code back to our user. And the reason it has to be a vulnerable website is that no website should ever just take arbitrary input from the user and then reflect it back to them, especially reflecting back something like JavaScript code. So it has to be a vulnerable website. But what's happening here is our web server is reflecting that code back to the user. The web page that's being sent back to the user is gonna contain the JavaScript code that was in the URL. Now, when our user here gets that web page back, what's the user's browser going to do with that web page? It's gonna start parsing the web page. It's gonna hit the JavaScript code that was sent by the attacker at the very beginning. And our user's browser is gonna do exactly what it's designed to do, which is execute the code. And finally, step five, what's gonna happen when our user's browser executes that code? Well, what typically happens in a reflected cross-site scripting attack is that the user's browser is the JavaScript code requests the user's browser to send some data back to the baddie, some cookies or something like that. So this is reflected cross-site scripting. Our baddie sends a URL to the user, tricks the user into clicking on that URL, that URL is sent to the web server. The web server reflects the code that it was contained in the URL back to the user. Our user's browser executes that code and 
some arbitrary, some data is sent to our baddie here. So we call this reflected cross-site scripting. Here's an interesting question. Who is the victim of this attack? In other words, if another user goes to exactly the same website after this attack has just occurred, this reflected attack has just happened to this user, is our next user going to be reflected by this attack? And the answer is no. Think again, just google.com. Whatever you search for, does that have any impact on the next user that goes to google.com and searches for something else? Absolutely not. And it's the same answer here. So this is why we say that reflected cross-site scripting attacks are not persistent. The attack only occurs when a particular user clicks on a particular URL containing some code, which is reflected back to just that user. So that's why we call it reflected, and we say it's not persistent. Now, the final thing that's worth thinking about here is who is the target of the attack? Who is ultimately being targeted? Who does the baddie want to get data from? And the answer is, who's the target of our attack? The target of our attack is our user here. That's ultimately who our baddie wants to get data from.